with news you can use. We've talked about this before. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the fact, in fact, I showed some pictures. Uh, the, the largest container port in the United States is the port of Long Beach slash Los Angeles or San Pedro. They bring in more container ships. In other words, more of our imports in this country are brought in through that those particular ports, those two ports, they're, they're grouped together as one. Um, than any place else in the United States. And it, it's a big factor. It's like three or four times as much as the, the number two port beyond that. Um, and I, I showed you a picture of about a year ago uh, when I lived in Huntington Beach, where there was uh, one or two boats uh, sitting outside the harbor to be offloaded. And uh, here about a month ago, I took a picture and there was 44. Well, yesterday they shattered a record and now our 65 container ships stuck off the coast of California waiting to be offloaded while there are 92 in port, uh, which is five times higher than the previous average that are being currently unloaded. Um, there is a, a, right now there's a six day wait uh, for birthing space. And this is one of the biggest reasons. In fact, I would say, I would argue it's actually the, the biggest reason that we're having a problem with inflation right now. Uh, we can't bring in goods and services or goods that we need to, in order to provide for goods and services here uh, at the same kind of pace that we had pre-COVID. And we have not been able to catch up. In fact, it, it continues to get worse. Um, you know, this is a kind of a good news, bad news thing. The good news is there's obviously a lot of people interested in buying a lot of goods. Uh, the bad news is we just can't get them into the country quick enough. And so um, one of the things that happened during COVID, and we've talked about this previously as well, is that during COVID, especially the port of Long Beach, uh, let go of a ton of their longshoremen, they retired them out. They use COVID as a, a reason to really scale back. And, and of course, they had to do that to stay in business. But, um, you know, with the way that the government has managed the unemployment insurance and things like that, they haven't brought back on people quick enough. And the, the longshoreman job is a tough job. It's uh, you've got to really know what you're doing. Uh, this isn't somebody they can bring out of school. It's a long term process to go from apprentice to journeyman to, you know, full longshoreman. Uh, a friend of mine was, uh, and for years, a longshoreman that became a, a supervisor with them. And he was telling me that they had let go of a ton of people and they've just not been able to bring people back. Um, and like I said, it, it probably takes 10 years to go from that apprentice all the way up to the full longshoreman union to run these gigantic billion dollar cranes, offloading multi-billion dollar ships of goods. Um, and, you know, there's no clear way to get through this um, other than time. And it seems to be getting worse. Uh, like I said, it's a six day wait um, and it's still taking about 48 hours to offload a boat. Used to run about three to four hours to offload a ship. Um, and, and so, you know, it is it is possible that we're going to see a shortage of goods uh, for a long period of time here, maybe another year or so. And potentially, you know, we're gonna have to go look at other ports of entry, maybe the East Coast and, and some of these places, although the transportation is set up to really go from Southern California to every place else in the country. It's not set up to go from, say, New York to the West. I know it doesn't make sense. It should be just the opposite and you circle around, but it's not. All the routes are built on going from West to East, uh, everything because most of the food in this country is grown here in California, frankly and it's shipped from here to the east, all of the container ships or the vast majority are offloaded here and they go from west to east. So we've got ourselves in a real topsy-turvy uh, position and inadvertently this is spiking the inflation rate. And so I don't see a good short-term fix for that. Um, and it, it seems to be getting worse. So you will see inflation continue to lag on um, you know, as other ports continue to pick up some of the, the work that can't be done uh, where it was previously done here in Southern California. So we'll see what happens. Uh, that's the news uh, you can use and not uh, particularly good news, but at least you can see what's, uh, what's happening. It's very interesting. If you ever drive down to Southern California, you go from Long Beach, you can take PCH, uh, Pacific Coast Highway, all the way down to San Diego. And you used to see these boats stacked up. Uh, next biggest city below Long Beach is Huntington Beach. And then below that's Newport Beach and so on, and all the way down in San Diego County. 
Um, and it used to be, you know, you'd see a boat or two in front of Long Beach uh, and maybe one or two or three in front of Huntington Beach. Now it's stacked past Huntington Beach, past Newport Beach, and past Laguna Beach. I mean, the whole coast is lined with cargo ships, primarily from the east, uh, uh, China and, and some of the Middle Eastern countries where some of this stuff comes from, or the Asian countries where some of this stuff comes from. So uh, we'll see uh, what happens and we'll keep you guys apprised, but that's the kind of tip of the spear look at what's causing inflation and what's causing shortages on things like, for example, you, we can't get cars. You, know, you go by any car lot in this country and they're short on cars and they don't have replacement parts. They don't have uh, the rare earth metals that they need to build you know, a lot of the panels that are necessary in cars. And so that's uh, kind of what we're dealing with. And it looks like that will continue to be a deal for a while. Um, you know, that uh, in terms of how that affects us in the housing business, the primary early effect was on lumber because we don't log as much in this country as we need to, although we do log enough. Um, and we have to primarily bring it in from Canada. Fortunately, stuff coming in from Canada docks in the Seattle area and is moved east from there. So that's why lumber has gone from, last week we showed you a pickup load of lumber that a year ago was $315, went as high as $3,300 four months ago, and is now down to like $600. So, um, you know, we're getting that piece rectified in terms of inflationary pressures, but not things like rare earth metals, uh, some of the other metal type products, and some of the manufactured goods that we used to bring in from uh, the Far East. So that's it for news you can use.